Good afternoon. Sorry, I am late. Um, my boy's back, and so sorry, not sorry. The my my day has revolved around him. I am speaking to you today. Um, yeah, I I think I'm. I am. I'm in the group only because I don't really. No, it's not just the topic, but um, I think that when we do talking points, um, it's it's you guys in the group. Um, who deserve to hear all this and anyone that's outside the group and can't be bothered to join then they don't need to hear about this do they um wendy thank you for joining us i am talking about online porn today um i suppose i could talk about porn in general but let's just face it that this is how kids get hold of the you know the the material nowadays um unless of course they go and find someone's stash of playboy um that which is what i did when i was about 10 might have been a bit younger than that um and i was told i went as i was at a friend's house and i don't know there was a, a Playboy lying in between, on the coffee table, lying in between something like National Geographic and, you know, Car Weekly. And we found this and the mother responded, oh no, it's, um, it's daddy's artistic material. Well, it wasn't. It was bloody Playboy, but there you are. Um, so, you know, it's always been around it's, and, and, and it's just become... It's become slightly more accessible to our kids, hasn't it? And that's the worrying thing. Um, but just cool your jets. Just don't panic. It's not the end of the world. Um, I am, my foster son is sitting here earwigging. Oh, okay, that's cool. Um, thank you for that. How old is he, just so I know? Um, because I might have to curb my language. Well, actually, you know, sometimes, in fairness, kids need to learn, don't they? Lisa, thank you for joining us. Um, so as far as porn is concerned, just don't overreact. Um, it might worry you a bit, but it's... Oh, 21. Oh, well, then if I use bad words, he, he'll probably know worse ones than I do, Wendy. Um, e plus R equals O. We know this, don't we? We know this. E plus R equals O. The, the event is not going to change. Um, R is your response, which gets the outcome that you do or don't want. So if you overreact and go, oh my God, it's going to turn into a sexual deviant, then okay, good luck with that. Um, you know, but let's not, let's not sort of overreact. Um, this is based on... Um, a member question I got and and understandably the, the 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 parent just sort of did the ask me in a private message and said what do I do and I thought you know what this sort of question is is something that comes up a lot and some parents don't know what to do and don't ask it so I salute the lady that asked she wanted well I I don't know if she wanted to remain anonymous but because she didn't put it in the group I'm going to assume she did so what do we do? I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of porn. I'm not going to, you know, as as far as we're concerned, we all know what it is. Um, you know, some people have have varying sort of higher standards. If that's a, that's not even the right word, but a, a higher benchmark than others of what is or constitutes porn and what doesn't. Just work on what's good for you, as far as that's concerned. What I would say, and and do you know what? <laughs> Um, I don't, I, I, as far, let's just get the security out of the way and the parental controls out of the way. My kids are 22 and 20, start again, rewind, thank God, thank God they're not here, 23 and 25. So as far as parental controls are concerned, when I was implementing them, they were, you know, they, they, they'd be very, very different versions than there are today. I do know that you can get parental controls to your Wi-Fi. I do know that you can get parental controls to your each device. Uh, but listen, love, if your if your child is anyway te techy or you're not, they'll be able to jump through hoops about sorting out parental controls. You know, I I was mentioning this with um, 
Chris, who's Alice's boyfriend, and he's a tech whiz, and he sort of said, oh God, come on Kai, you know, 10 year olds know how to change the name of their own device. So, you know, it, 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 it might have started off as Sam's phone and now he can change it to, you know, the next door neighbor's name. And so you might sort of think, oh, well, no one's on. And you, do you know what I mean? So your kids, actually we're probably more technically aware than you so don't think for one minute you've got the upper hand but but that said if you've got a young child put parental controls on your on your devices you can do it at router level you can do it at you know whatever level and don't you dare say you're a technophobe oh no oh my you know i haven't got any parental controls on because i don't quite understand how to do it well shame on you it's your responsibility to do it. And, and I feel strongly about that, can you tell? You know, not being funny, if you've got a four-year-old, you don't send them into the gents loos on their own, public loos on their own, do you? No. If you do, you might want to think rethink that one. But as far as the internet and as far as devices are concerned, if you have got a young child at home, young being the operative word, you know, or you want to, you want to restrict the material that they are accessing online then get bloody parental controls um anyone that has got some that are useful please put in the comments because mine are the the, the suggestions i'll come up with are all very backdated and out of date now um and probably don't even exist because i'm so old um so as far as porn is concerned oh wendy i mean wendy's just said it all shall i go Taxi for Kai. You're quite right. Teach self-respect and self-worth. But it's how we do that, especially with porn. The first thing is that parental controls are good. I've just discussed that. So you've got to do that, you know. But, and if they're little, parental supervision is better. Um, but when they get to the sort of, you know, the the teens where they want independence and they're in their room and you know you, you when you get to the stage where they have phones they they disappear up to their room and you don't know what the hell's going on and yeah porn can be found you know you can get it on devices you can get it on xboxes you can get it on smart tvs you can get it anywhere if you don't know if they're watching it go and look at your internet history and you will see the devices, uh, the, the, the sites that have been accessed there. But let's face it, if they know what they're doing, they'll clear the cache. <sighs> What's a cache? Listen, let's not get into it. I do remember my first experience with my children and um, them being exposed to pornographic or unsavory savory material online was when I was helping them with a history project. And I typed in, wait for it, Henry VIII and his six wives. Seriously. Seriously. And I had whatever parental controls I thought were appropriate at the time. So do you know what? If your child is young-ish, you know, sort of seven, eight, nine, ten, and and um, maybe up to their early teens, the chances are they might find porn by mistake. Chances are. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. The, 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 the issue is when it's repeated use, when it's repeated access to sites, when it's, and it sort of turns into an, an addiction. And let's face it, we, do, we have to deal with those in a very different manner um, you know if, if, if someone sort of falls upon pornographic material by mistake we need to be sensitive let's face it come on we need to be sensitive regardless but also one thing that is really my caveat here is it has to this is all relevant to the age of your child how you would speak to an eight-year-old eight is very different how, to how you would speak to an 18-year-old. How you would speak to an immature 13-year-old is very different to how you would speak to, an, uh, to a mature 13-year-old. I don't know who your audience is. I don't know. So you've got to think about this accordingly. Please let me take a slip. So it is age-appropriate and it is child-appropriate. 
Now I know we've got Lisa and we've got Wendy online, we've got others online, but because of your privacy settings, I can't see you. You don't have to say hello, but if you do, you'll get a shout out. So it's got to be age appropriate and, you know, just work out, is it repeated use or is it sort of one off? Um, so with little ones, parental supervision, you know, have them sitting in the front room rather than in their room. Um, take all the devices away from them at night. Turn the internet off at night. Well, you do that anyway, if this is really what's worrying you. Some people are easy come, easy go. Um, and other people are not so easy come, easy go. And that's fine. It, a lot, In fairness, a lot will have to do with your upbringing as well. Um, oh, Lisa, thank you for joining us. Um, so that's, yeah, that's a few of us. Anyone on the replay? Listen, if you've got any questions uh, uh, or, or you're on the replay and, and you know, as, as well, please sort of say hi or like or heart or do whatever you're used to doing. Um, so yeah, it's age appropriate and um, it's, it's, you, you, you've got to react to your situation accordingly, but people need sometimes and want pointers, so here we are. How to react? Calmly. Calmly. And with kindness. And with love. Not the sort of, oh my God, what am I going to do? I failed as a parent. Because you haven't. And depending on their age, do you know what? Do you know what? I mean, we never had the internet in our day. But when I was bored as a child, we used to sit upstairs and, cause, uh, and there was a phone in my mum and dad's bedroom. And we used to sit there with the phone book. And we used to find rude words and phone up. And, and, and laugh down the phone. Hello, is that Mr. Bottom? <laughs> and okay, I was about seven. And you know, hello, is that Mrs. Boob? <laughs> Have you got a big pair? <laughs> you know, okay, yeah. It, it. So the thing is, is it's it's natural, it's it's infantile, but hey, you know, that's how uh, we, we thought it was hugely hilarious. Um, and And sort of the same sort of thing the same sort of thing is still happening, but the kids have got the internet, which is really scary. You know, they, they might just type in um, bare bottom or they might sort of type in nude man. And I'll tell you what, oh, oh, no thanks. But what you've got to realise is and understand, if it is simple, mindless um, curiosity or... or infantile behavior it's you, you you're going to be dealing with them slightly differently let's face it aren't you so i wouldn't throw anger at them i wouldn't throw panic at them um because it's natural for them to be curious the very nature of the topic makes them deviant uh, or devious deviant makes them devious and they know for whatever reason you know that it, it's sort of it needs to be sort of slightly cloak and dagger and slightly sort of you know um hidden from you they're not going to go oh mum i've just finished my homework and i'm just going to do about 10 minutes of porn before i go on to uh before i go and watch game of thrones well actually god game of thrones is bad enough isn't it but you know what i mean they're not that they're not going to admit to, oh yeah i'm just going to go on to pornhub and see that anyone's uploaded anything new recently they're not going to do it so face it so they are going to be secretive about it and and that's normal what's not normal is if we go into repeated hours and and repeated viewing and 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 constant and and you will actually that starts happening um you will see a change in their behavior in all fairness um but it's not your job to punish them really we've discussed if you follow me you'll know that i'm actually not one for punishments because punishments to me are really a last resort they're a way of sort of saying oh crap i've lost control and um I, I do as I say because I'm I'm the boss and yeah you can take that but it just builds resentment and it builds more secrecy it is not your job to punish them but it is your job to protect them so 
I would say, and we're gonna, we'll, we'll go into this in depth, but I would say your role is to be kind, to be gentle, to reassure them, and answer any questions they have. Because one child I know was, um, and his mum went, oh my God, oh geez, really mum? And I think the child was about eight or nine and um, the, the internet history had, what is a blowjob? Because, and let's face it, the child was, you know, they're talking about it in the playground or on the school bus and everyone's talking about blowjob and this young child's sort of sitting there sort of going, oh my God, I don't know what it is and they're all laughing and I'm feeling really square and pathetic and I don't know, oh yeah, 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 I know what one of those is. Uh, yeah, well, you know, have you ever done, oh yeah, just sort of once a week and everyone laughs and they have no idea what they're talking about. So what do they do? Of course, they go and look online. If they're not careful, God imagine, you know, the, the, the things that come up and okay, if you're 17, 18, you can handle it. And if you're seven, you can't handle what comes up. So it is your job to answer questions and it is your job to keep the lines of communication open and open the conversation. It, you know, and, and don't be a prude, don't know. Oh no, I, I can't possibly, I can't possibly talk to my child about sex or porn. Oh, okay, well if you can't, guess what they're going to do? They're gonna type in, what is a blowjob? And it, it, on your own head be it, seriously. Well, excuse the pun. Mm -hmm. um, but do you know what I mean? You need to be able to have these tricky conversations with your child because if you don't and if you're a prude and if you're sort of, oh no, well my religion or my faith or my beliefs say that it's a sin, okay, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I appreciate that. I respect that. But if you are not going to answer your child's curiosity, natural curiosity, biological curiosity, then where on earth are they going to get this information from? Because if they're going to get it from their mental it's going to be misinformation so I'll tell you what let's go on to the internet because that's the font of all knowledge oh my golly and look at the pictures would you rather your child looked at the pictures uh, a seven-year-old to see seven people at it you know a hot and sweaty mess or would you like to explain it gently and sensitively and okay it might make your toes, toes curl but would you like to do it that way would you like to be in control of the situation because that is your decision so i suggest you get over your oh my goodness i can't cope with this because if you can't you're letting your child down simple as so Science says, let's just get a bit of the sciencey bit out of the way. Sex is great. We have, you know, you have all these sort of hormones and, 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 and it's like a roller coaster and it's, uh, you know, it's the Harry Met Sally minute and one minute you're feeling great and then you're sort of feeling in the ecstasy and then you're a sort of hot and sweaty mess at the end of it and sort of feeling cool, cool calm and collected and re reaching for a fag. That's great. The problem with porn is that there is none of that association with the other person or people, delete where applicable. Um, and so what porn does is it has all those emotions. Um, yeah, it has all those emotions, but none of that association, none of that connection, none of that bond, none of that love or whatever you know, admittedly, sex doesn't always have to involve love, but if you're talking to a seven-year-old, I suggest you include that word a lot. Um, but, you know, so, so, porn is very much detached from real life, as we know. But scientifically, what happens is when, when we're exposed to porn, um, well, and sex, but let's just talk about porn anyway. The, the dopamine levels skyrocket, and that's all to do with about emotion. That's all to do with need and craving, and and those sort of you know the, the, those levels go sort of out the window. Then endorphins kick in, which means that we've got the highs and the lows and the and that 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 hit that that you know sort of 
excitement and, and sort of satisfaction or, you know, even better, high pleasure and all that sort of stuff. And so the endorphins kick in and that's great. That's fantastic. And then afterwards, the, you know, the, the, the sort of when it's all over and everything calms down, the serotonin kicks in and that gives us that sense of calm. So forget about the, you know, if you sort of, if, if, if the sex bit, if you're doing it with other people, if, if you're porn and watching it on your own and doing the masturbating, if that's what they're also doing, what then happens is all these hormones are going like this and it's great, it feels fantastic and then it stops and then it's right, okay, well, I'll get on with my maths homework now. But what happens is that the brain starts anchoring this. So if, it's, if it becomes repeated behaviour, what happens is the brain starts getting trained into, you want your highs and lows, do this. Do you remember what you did? Do you remember how great you felt when you watched that porn? Did you remember sort of how wonderful it felt? Well, go and do more of that. Go and do more of that. And what happens is the fact that you, the, the, the brain sort of creates that habit and, and it, it sort of has that anchor of porn does this, porn does this. It makes me feel great. It makes me feel great. And, and, soon it, it it's totally disassociated with sex love connection uh, association relationship whatever but with repeated use with repeated exposure to porn what happens is you're getting the repeated highs and the repeated lows but you get brain fatigue and so what starts to happen is the brain sort of gets so bloody knackered it stops producing the dopamine it stops producing all these feel-good hormones and so therefore the highs and the lows of life are no longer having any impact and so it's just that dull sort of you know the the, the brain's not it, it, it's just it's just stagnant um, and so, with and with any addictive behaviour, this is what booze does. This is what you know drugs do. It, it it dulls all these senses. So therefore, you need a bigger high. You need a bigger stimulus. And this is when that's when it starts getting dangerous. When the brain goes into fatigue and it goes, no, this ain't doing it for me anymore. And that's when depression sets in that's when it's listless behavior the appetite goes they get aggressive they you know it's that's that's when um it, it gets scary so it's all very well sort of saying you know no don't sort of type in you know naked men don't do that but you know because and we'll talk about that in a minute but what what is important especially and, and, and only for the older kids is explaining to them the biology on why this is dangerous because it starts shrinking and dulling those parts of the brain that are looking for highs and hits and you know just looking for excitement and and for some you know for, for any sort of anyone not addicted to porn Something like, sorry to use you as an example, Lisa, but, but going to steps is, oh my God, I'm so excited. Do you know what I mean? The everyday life is, is, is enough for, for, for anyone, you know, not and suffering from these addictions. And I don't mean, I'm not talking just about porn here. I'm talking about anything that is mind altering. And if, you know, be it booze, be it cigarettes, be it pop, be it, da, 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 you know, drugs be it sex, be it work, be it, you know, any addiction. That's the point. And that, that's it, Wendy. You need more and more and more and you just become nulled to it all. And that's, that's when it gets dangerous, okay? So, let me just take a slurp. Yeah, I've, I've spoken about that bit, so that's right. So, how do we educate our children, right? Well, let's just start off with the young ones. As I had, I, as I was so rudely thrown into this conversation um, with, with, with Jack, you know, oh Jack, you know, that's not what Henry VIII looked like, really. That's not a picture of Henry VIII, Jack. And that woman next to him is not Anne Boleyn. Right, what, how do we talk about this? So, it was, I think with the little ones, it's, it's actually quite easy because we explained to them that... 
porn is for grown-ups. And the thing is, is I would suggest you don't actually relate it too much to sex because sex is different because it's loving and it's between consenting adults and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And it's meant to be a beautiful experience. And you want to keep that for, for as long as possible, that idea for your children. So I wouldn't so much sort of talk, put, put um, link up. Uh, you're going to have to a bit because that's basically what it is. But I would I wouldn't connect the dots too strongly what I would suggest is say this is for grown-ups but the problem with this because it's online is no, it because it can be very violent and 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 if they even understand degrading but just to say it can be quite alarming or it you know it's, there's there's you know what people put up there isn't normal life um you're quite right Wendy Ma making love is very different to sort of sex yeah, you're quite right. Um, but I think the thing is, is giving them the association that porn isn't for everyone. It's, you know, sex and making love and whatever you want to call it, it, it is very, very different to this. And um, it's best that they don't look at it for a while because it, sometimes it can be quite frightening. Sometimes it can be quite upsetting. So, you know, and just explain to them without being too alarming, go, oh no, well, you know how you're not allowed to watch horror movies? Because I remember when I was about eight, I watched a Dracula movie and seriously, seriously, I, because the babysitter said Christopher Lee was a very, very good actor and we'd love this movie. She was so frightened that she made us watch it and I think I was about eight absolutely terrified me for years and so you could use that sort of sense of thing you know how we don't let you watch these movies or play on these types of games because they're a bit too violent or they're a bit too adult or the then this is what porn is so but all the while making sure that you have got parental controls in place so I would just uh, that's probably enough for little ones and and sort of do that yes i know that you want to you know that you just searched what is a blow job but the question is is that it's probably best for the next few years you come and ask me these questions because i can help you and i can give you a better understanding and it'll be a bit quicker and it's quite nice when we sit down and have a chocolate hobnob and a chat so and it's just just being quite matter of fact without alarming about it the difference is, is when you're talking to older teens, another slur. And I would say it is worth saying to them that um, this is not real life. You know, for, for and, and I apologize. Well, I was going to say I apologize to anyone if the the, te the terminology I'm using is offensive. Well, I'm sorry. Get over yourself because this is what we're. This is what the subject matter is, um, and it might just get a little bit more interesting in a minute. But the point is, it's worth. You know, I. I uh, heard that. Um, there was a party, this was a couple of years back, there was a party at someone's house and um, the initiation was um, that if requested the boys were allowed to ask for a blowjob. Excuse me? And the thing was is that all this stuff and sexualization and sexuality and whatever is becoming so normalized at the minute that our kids don't know what's actually acceptable behavior and what's not. And it is up to us to go, do you know what? That is totally not on. Because it's all, ab I mean, to me, porn objectifies women anyway, if you're looking at the, um, you know, at, at the not hardcore. Um, so it is worth saying to our children, especially our daughters, but to our sons as well, not everyone has vajazzles, not everyone has boob jobs, not everyone has a 15 inch willy, not everyone is, a, you know, has sex with three and 23 people, not everyone has Botox. And it's just sort of saying, you know, this is not real life. Not everyone has hugely sort of loud orgasms. This is not the way it works. Because we, we, we have to explain to them, everything is, is, is dialed up, everything is perfected, if that's the right word, so that it makes for, I was gonna say good viewing, that, 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 that's, that's a, 
sort of subjective point even you know by saying it but it's explaining to children that well yeah you've got hair in different places or you're sort of slightly larger smaller or whatever than the people on the screen and that is normal you know I, I, I mean you know don't get me started on what Ken and Barbie look like I mean that's not even normal um, but that's the way it is so I think the thing is is explaining to our kids that um, especially the slightly older ones that what you are seeing on the screen is not sort of real life people um, it is all in soft focus or you know whatever um, and this mode of behavior is not what usually happens and this is when we need to start talking about consent that you know oh have you got to first base oh have you got to second base what about third base oh my god you're still on third base and you haven't got there and you're on date number four we need to we need to explain to our children they have choice we need to explain to them that they should have respect um, and if they are sort of dying to get from second to third base and they sort of know that their other half or whoever they're sort of thinking about, you know, sort of um, having sex with or making love with or whatever, if they're uncomfortable, you have to respect that. And that is not what is shown in porn values are not shown and respect is not shown and love is not shown and understanding is not shown and compassion and wobbly bits and it's none all that is is conveniently erased so that we have this glitzy spectacular of whatever and we must explain to our children that what you see on a screen is not it's not real life it's not how it all operates really um and then it might be your choice to explain to them a bit more about you know uh s m or bestiality or you know um uh you see things like 50 shades didn't do us any favors either did it because it was all it sort of normalized it for a while um and 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 13 Reasons Why is now back and, and sort of, you know, we're, we're, there are sort of, there are sort of rape scenes and there's suicide, you know, and, and all this is, is, is in front of our children. So what, and, and it doesn't matter if they're seven or if they're 17 or, or even older than that. I think the thing is, is that keeping those lines of communication open is absolutely vital and being adult about it and not a namby-pamby and going oh no i can't possibly talk about willies or i can't possibly because you know you're not really serving your child properly then is it and imagine if you are being coy about it oh no oh no that's not how i was brought up or the lord says i must if that that's fine just think on this do you want your child's first introduction to sex or making love to be from a porn site do you want your child's first introduction to sex or making love to be viewed on a porn site and if you do then you may as well switch off now that's fine that's that's your choice but if you don't then just pay heed to what we're talking about because it's important. I do hasten to add, I, I, you've got to get this in your head. Having a curiosity about sex, about making love, about the body, about porn, it is normal. If only because they're a bag of hormones now, or to save the embarrassment on the number 74 bus when they're coming home that they don't know what a blowjob is or they don't even know what a vajazzle is. Or, do you know what I mean? Gosh, imagine typing that into, into whatever. You'd soon get educated on that score, wouldn't you? So it's really, 
it's it's understanding that what your child is going through and the, the stages that they're reaching are normal. It's cu they're curious. But it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to, to, to communicate with them. And, and th the more sort of open you are, and <laughs> none of this. Oh no, I got, oh gosh, well, you know, the man's thingy and the lady's thingy. No, come on, you, you're an adult now. And, and, and if your child sees you reacting like that, that's exactly how they're going to react. And they're going to, um, they're, 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 they're going to, well, they're going to be embarrassed. They're going to um, not turn to you when they have more serious questions. You know, so it's, it's important that you you sort of cope with this. Um, the thing is, is that I, th I think I've probably sort of, you know, gone on about that enough. I think so. The thing is, it's normal and your responses have to be age appropriate. They um, and, and, you know, they, they need you need to be fairly calm about this. I think the problem comes is when you see a change in behavior, if you go and look at the history your internet history and you see oh my god this has been going on for weeks days months whatever and you see that your child is clocking up the hours and hang on a minute now i know their behavior has changed now i know this you know that because what happens is is they become slightly more aggressive because there's so many hormones and then there's the dopamine then there's you know the serotonin and then there's the endorphins they're, choo -choo 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 -choo, they're going like this they they their behaviour does change a bit, that, that, you know, um, if, if there is an addiction there, if their behaviour becomes compulsive. So it's all very well sort of saying, oh, my child spends their whole time, um, you know, upstairs in their room listening to Barry Manilow. Um, it, you know, just make sure it is. Or make sure that they are doing their... I was going to say history homework, but you know what I mean. But make sure they are doing what you think they are because they're devious because they know what your reaction's going to be. So, oh, I trust my child implicitly. Well, yeah, that's good. That's, that's lovely, but just check anyway because actually you're protecting them. It's your job to protect them. And... When, when it turns into an addiction, I have said, yes, it's natural, it's normal. This isn't, you know, sort of, if they're just looking or if they've just come across the site or if they go, oh my God, mum, what's that? Or whatever, you know, just searching just out of curiosity is natural. But be very careful because when it turns into an addiction, it becomes harmful. When it t t turns into compulsive behaviour, it becomes harmful. And you need to react you need to drop the wi-fi you need to take the devices away at night you need to, you know and, and and yeah what happens is is well what happens is that they they invariably go to a mate's house and they're able to use their devices but you know watching porn for fun is sort of i was going to say fine but it's understandable it, it, with, with um with a load of mates or whatever and oh my god oh my god look at that but it's when, it's when it becomes addictive and compulsive that they're, they're not likely to be wanting to um, share this with friends either. You know, there's a tipping point. Um, and, and some people even suggest, that, you know, when, when it's become, if it's become an addiction or they, they, they're in a cycle of compulsive behaviour, it, it might be worth going to speak to the GP. It might be, you know, to because... To, this behaviour is something that's just got, um, just, you know, got out of hand. Um, I, w I did actually say somewhere in one of the posts, um, you know, that I'd mentioned sexting. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's sending sexually explicit messages. Um, legally, if you s send or receive, um, you, you, you're sort of up the creek without a paddle so legally it might be worth telling your child that so it is is sending sort of sexually explicit um photos and material 
Childline did a survey a couple of years ago. 50% of the children they um, surveyed had received sexually explicit content through one of their devices. 60% of kids had been asked for pictures of, you know, sexually explicit pictures, invariably of them. And 25% of those children sent stuff. And I'm telling you that I have received phone calls through Childline from children who say, I sent a picture of me. And my very, very first question is, can you be identified? As in, um, is your face in the thingy or is, is your phone number or whatever? Because that's two different um, forms of, uh, of action that you can take. But, you know, kids were being blackmailed. Kids were being, you know, by cyberbullied by other kids but also it was you know a couple of cases were, were quite sinister if you don't come to this park to meet me i'm going to put that picture on a lamppost or on the lampposts in your town and so everyone will see it and they were bloody terrified um so it's it's and the thing is 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 um i say to kids just think think before you send or receive anything or you Google anything or whatever, think about it. And ask yourself this one question. Would you want your grandparent to see this? And if the answer is heck no, then just think. Think twice before taking any action. And that usually works because it might take a millisecond to press send, but this stuff lasts for ever just out of interest and this is really sort of sexually explicit material it's not so much porn but um but you know it, it, it's worth sort of mentioning what happens when it does if something does go wrong well you ask your friends please don't circulate that photo i sent of whatever yeah right good luck with that one but get them to speak to a trusted adult be it at school be it you you really um, but sometimes you don't know what's going on. There are two other um, sort of things that you can do. You can speak to the Internet Watch Foundation, which is www.iwf.org.uk. So it's iwf.org.uk. And, and they sort of, you know, and there's a report button there and they can they sort of, sort of start. Um, it, it's all to do with minors. That, that, that sort of, it's, it's, all this is minors, you know, if... Um, I can't even remember. Black Mirror. Black Mirror. If anyone's seen that, the first episode. God, that was disturbing. It was, um, and it was just about, it was all about technology. If you've seen, was it Black Mirror? Yeah. And it was all about how technology sort of, um, you know, can, can influence our lives. And if it's not careful, we the balance tips and we're in serious serious trouble alison thank you for joining us um and it was it i mean it, it was about they had kidnapped someone and some princess and it's sort of they, they they sent a, a ransom demand to the whole of the uk network which then went global because you know no, no sooner does something come up on Facebook, the news or whatever, it, it's global, it goes viral within seconds. And it said the ransom demand is for the UK Prime Minister to make love to or have sex or whatever you want to call it with a pig. Wait for it. Live one. Thank you very much. Live on air. Right. Well, that was a, 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 a TV program that was I don't I, I, I considered entertainment it was just you know I, I, I don't even know what to say about that what does that say to kids what does that say to I mean I think we've tipped the point already so what world and this was this was on Netflix and Netflix are also doing 13 reasons why and it's up to us to pick up the pieces because some people are just bloody irresponsible and they broadcast this, not, not just porn, that's a problem. They broadcast this for ratings. 
and we are left to pick up the pieces to say to our children, this is not acceptable, but mum, it's on Netflix. What do you say? But anyway, as, as far, and then the fourth thing that you can do as far as images that are, are online um, of your children or, or friends of friends or whatever, of minors, let's say minors, um, is the CEOP, which is the Child Exploitation exploitation and online protection and that is the first place that we would send you know after all the trusted adults and speak to someone and get you know help um that 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 we would that would be a resource that we used at childline as well so it's ceop ceop dot police dot uk stephen thank you for joining us um and and that's it i i would say you're gonna have to um you're just going to have to put your big girl or your big boy pants on. You're going to have to just sort of say, you know, suck it up if you feel queasy or, or, or upset or nervous or embarrassed. I mean, don't. It's your child. It's your child's, it's your child's internet safety. And, and let's, you know, face it, it's, it's their overall well-being that you're in charge of here. And, and it's being sensitive and helping them and it's looking after them and it's protecting them a from the rubbish that is 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 normalized and considered entertainment and and be it these programs or porn or whatever um but it's up to us that we have to we have we have to do damage limitation because it's out there and, and and gone are the days where you're sitting upstairs with the phone book going hello is that mr ball <laughs> you know it's 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 a different world now and our children need protecting from protected from it um so it's parental controls are great parental supervision is is even better at, at certain ages and then it's education it's then just talking about consent it's talking about respect it's talking about love understanding um the dangers of addiction to porn or compulsive behavior to porn because of, we, we, we've touched on the sciencey bits um but don't don't get too alarmed because once you know invariably it's sort of idle curiosity and then oh yeah I've seen that yeah 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 I know yeah I know what a blowjob is yeah yeah I know what a vajazzle is yeah you know it's it's um it's sort of it becomes passe if you treat it like that if you if, if you sort of um overreact then you're you're just going to your child's not going to come to you that's as simple as that. And as I said, how do you want their first exposure to sex or making love or whatever? How do you how do you want it to be? Because you can control it. And if you're queasy about it or oh no, I'm just a technophobe, well you're you're sort of sending them to those sites because they, they not that they don't have any alternative, but there are no restrictions and no boundaries in place. Any questions, please ask. Um, I, I hope I have sort of shed a light on some of this stuff. Um, it's There's no need to overreact. It's it's part of growing up. Um, you know, I, I found a Playboy, which was so-and-so's artistic material, and I, I sort of wasn't scarred for life, so there you are. But I'll tell you what what's what's available online now can be quite scary and I think that's what we say to our young ones no you don't want to see that that's just that's just a bit scary that's it's quite violent you don't need to see that and then they'll go oh all right then and and that might be all they need to hear remember remember it's all age appropriate you don't have to give too much information always um you know kids ask questions it's a bit like you know it's a bit like asking mum is there a heaven well, you know, you can sit down and tell a two-year-old or a, or a five-year-old a very, very different answer than a 25-year-old. So it's, it's, it's age-appropriate, and you'll know what works best for your child. So on that note, much love, and um, I hope that was of help. But if, the, if anyone has 
internet nannies or parental controls please put it up there um, if not just go and google it you know you'll get the most up-to-date information there either from your service provider as well uh, your router provider or stuff like that but I hope that was useful um, but do you know what if you see that your child has found porn it's not the end of the world it's how you deal with it that's that will shape the the, the next stage so much love and I shall speak to you soon. Bye-bye.